Okay, this is Henry Grigione, live here in New York City, your investigative reporter, and here in the epicenter. I think New York City is still considered an epicenter. We have a great panel of guests today. We have folks from all over. We have Edwin Duterte, who is from California, Dr. Annette Tejero from Nevada. We have Miss Reba Sherell, and anybody let me know if I'm mispronouncing your name. My name is kind of different. My last name is difficult. Sherell? Cheryl. Cheryl, sorry. And she is a candidate for the 21st Congressional District out of Florida. We have Mr. Sam Sugar, and he is from, he'll introduce himself for what state he's from. And then we have Mr. Black, also from North Carolina. So this is great. We have all these states, the Northeast, meeting up with the West Coast, meeting up with Southeast. So uh, this is great. We're going to have a great discussion on Ms. Reba. To, she can introduce her candidacy for the 21st Congressional District. We need more conservative Republicans in Florida, and she is one of them. She's strong. And her primary is coming up this Monday, right, Ms. Reba? Uh, the 18th is coming up. Tuesday, sorry. And it's going to be the primary, and she's hoping that, God willingly, she is the one chosen. And uh, apart from that, we'll let her, her introduce her guest when, it's, when she gets a chance to speak. We're going to be talking about the brief incidents that are happening with the nursing home deaths here in New York. We're up to 6,600 deaths. We had two hearings. We'll talk about that later on. And also in Florida, it's now become the new epicenter and where there's a lot of uh, cases that are coming out of that. And we'll discuss that. So thank you, everyone, who's going to be joining us today. And we're going to have a very lively discussion. Mr. Edwin Duterte. Take it away. Hey, how, how are you, uh, Ariba? And congratulations on your uh, run for U.S. Congress. Uh, your primary uh, looks very exciting. Uh, what are uh, what are your thoughts about uh, about uh, your race? And what's uh, uh, you know what are you going to do once you get out uh, of the primary and into the general? Well, um, my the focus of my campaign is really fighting against fraud and corruption. That's my main uh, attack. And I have many areas that I'll be focusing in for that. Um, and the second wing, if you will, of my platform is health and wellness. We really need to restructure the healthcare industry because it's on life support. And uh, as Annette had <laughs> shared previously, and uh, it's a sick care industry and we need to be more wellness focused. Great, great, great. Um, you know, speaking of, of wellness, you know, I'm sure Dr. Annette has some uh, some uh, questions as well as uh, you know, maybe some ideas of how to uh, uh, what you know uh, what should be done on the legislative side, uh, right? Right, uh, Dr. Annette. Yes, I do. I always do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so let me throw it to uh, Dr. Annette, and uh, you know, what do you think should be done on uh, on the legislative side that uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss Cheryl uh, should be thinking about? I guess she, she has to be in connection with her particular district. I don't know what the makeup is demographically of your district. Can you go through that on a healthcare basis and figure out where your constituents are so that everybody knows? Yes, well, we have a large population that comes in in the winter months, what we call the high season. We have an influx of people from New York, so we have a really close tie with the guys up there in Cuomo land. Uh, and uh, so we have a vested interest in what happens to the constituents that reside in New York in the summer months, and they come here in the winter. So um, I actually took a trip up to New York at the end of May to help fight and protest for the rights of people that were being um, disallowed there in the nursing homes, in the hospitals. Um, they weren't being properly protected. So we have a lot of elders and we have people of all age groups. Uh, we also have a lot of illegal immigrants as well as legal immigrants. We have a wide range of, of uh, citizens here in District 21. Great. And, uh, um... You know, you're, you're saying that there's a lot of uh, people that, you know, come over in the winter and in, are they registered uh, voters typically in Florida or are they registered usually uh, in other parts of the country? They can either register in uh, the, the place where they spend their summers or here in the winter, you know, because they they split their time. Oftentimes it's six months in one state, six months in the other. Some of them choose to register in 
uh, Florida to vote and to have it as their primary residence because we have zero income tax so um, for our, our state. So it has some tax advantages and some people do uh, take advantage of that fact. Oh, we love that. Love that. Um, now, what is your outreach to uh, to the to the voters? Because it looks like your district is uh, uh, very lopsided, uh, one party or, uh, t to the next uh, to our party. Um, so, how, what what is your outreach uh, looking like, and uh, what can we do to help you? Well, we, we do have quite a few registered Democrats, but right now my focus is entirely on Republicans since I'm running in a primary uh, for the Republican vote. So after the primary, I will do more focus on Democrats, independents, and Tea Party. And I've already been reaching out to those people across the aisle and introducing myself to them. In fact, I spoke at a forum. I was the only candidate that showed up for a forum uh, with the Tea Party last week. And um, I talk to independents regularly. And I, I go out on the street and I meet with people that are also Democrats. And I've had many of them say that they will vote for me uh, because I like what I stand for, because I am for the people. I'm not for a party, I'm for the people. Oh, that's great. I, I was looking at your, your, uh, some of your primary uh, contenders, some of the other uh, Republican contenders. It looks like uh, you use your, your campaign funds a lot better than they, theirs. Uh, it looks like you have more cash on hand than, than your next opponent who's raised quite a bit. Well, I have more cash on hand than all other five combined. Right, right. That's, that's yeah. great. That's great. That's great. And I think it's important um, in campaign finance that we see how a candidate is able to manage their money properly and make that dollar stretch. Because oftentimes, well, like when I came into this race, I was told I would need three or four million dollars to win this election. And I don't think that's uh, necessarily true. Uh, it all depends on how, you, how creative you are and how well you manage things. And um, there's only one candidate that's had more money than myself in this race. And uh, she has spent it faster almost than she's brought it in. And it's all going to race more fundraising, you know? The funds are going to pay for fundraising. The funds are going to pay for fundraising. And it's not doing anything productive. And so we don't want to encourage our uh, Congress men and women uh, to have endless pockets of, of cash coming in so that they go to Congress and they are so flippant with our tax dollars. I want them to tighten the belt and I want them to spend it wisely. I want to see a return on my investment. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Edwin, give me yeah. a second. So uh, we want to introduce again Ms. Reba Sherrill so she can introduce her two guests, give an opportunity for each one of them to speak. Once again, uh, Ms. Reba Sherrill is running for the 21st Congressional District, and her primary is this Monday coming Tuesday. up. And Tuesday. This Tuesday, sorry, sorry, I'm stuck on the Monday mode. And this Tuesday, we want everybody to really look at you as a candidate. You are going against, uh, I think you could, you could correct me if I'm wrong, there's Laura Loomer and there is a gentleman named Acosta, right, Acosta, and he is running also. So you would consider them right now the folks that you're running against uh, for the ticket, for the Republican ticket, is that correct, Ms. Uh, there's, six, Cheryl? there's six candidates total. There's, six, there's yeah. also Liz Felton, Aaron Scanlon, and uh, Michael Velarde. Okay, so Ms. Uh, Cheryl, would you like to introduce your guests and allow them an opportunity to speak and uh, if you want to take it, you want to introduce them? And please call me Reba. Reba, uh, no problem. We're all friends here. So okay. um, Rick Black, he comes to us from Carolina and Rick has been doing a lot of advo advocacy work for elders all across the nation. So Rick, would you share a little bit with us, please? Sure, happy to. Can you hear me well? Yes. Very yes. well. Great. Um, you know, we're very familiar with the 21st District from an elder rights and elder abuse prevention perspective. Uh, we've, in fact, stopped by Congress, Congresswoman Lois Frankel's office several times in Washington, D.C., trying to get an audience to talk to her and several other, both senators, U.S. senators, and congressmen and women on the issues in Florida as well as the rest of the country with regard to 
elder financial exploitation, which is the primary focus of my nonprofit, SEER, which is the Center for State Administration Reform. Uh, we're supporting REBA in our efforts uh, to uh, become a congresswoman because one, she has a lot of practical insights on the issues plaguing Florida seniors and vulnerable adults. Um, and she brings a no nonsense approach to being a politician. And uh, we're big believers here at SEER uh, that uh, that's something that our country needs, conservative views in these roles that are being accountable for every tax dollar and cleaning up some of the mess that still exists in our country. So uh, we're, we're supporting Reba and her efforts. Very cool, very cool. Very cool. Uh, we have five minutes left, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, Henry, are you still there? All right. so, yes, sir. All right. So, um, go ahead, Ms. Reba. Do you want to introduce uh, Sam and allow him a moment? Yes. Yeah, so, um, Dr. Sam Sugar, uh, I became acquainted with him uh, because of an abusive guardianship situation. And he got interested in this uh, because of something that happened to a family member of his. And he's been very active. Sam, will you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? Sure, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and I'm very happy to be able to be supportive of your run for this prestigious office. My organization, which is also a 501c3, is Americans Against Abuse of Probate Guardianship. We're a national organization with a membership of around a thousand families, more or less. And our uh, raison d'etre, if you will, is to reveal and expose and educate the public about what goes on in abusive guardianships. It's a topic that is unfamiliar to most people, but certainly Reba is familiar with it. And so are the people who come to us for assistance. It's important for us as an organization, for us as individuals as well, to have representation in Congress from people who are sensitive, at the very least sensitive, if not personally experienced, with this problem across the country with abusive guardianships. They are very plentiful, they happen all the time, and when they do, even though a lot of guardianships are perfectly fine, when they go bad, they go horribly bad. They result in the premature death of wards, they result in the devastation of estates and miscarriages of justice throughout the system. So we're very happy to be supportive of Reba's role in this and are looking forward to her successful conclusion to this part of our campaign and ultimately to be elected and represent us as a, uh, as a conservative voice, one more necessary conservative voice in our Congress. Pleased to help. Sounds good. Uh, Edwin, how are we doing with time? We are close to uh, time-wise, right? Four, four minutes. Four minutes. So let's uh, wrap up this first part. And then if everyone doesn't mind, we're going to do a second part when we come back from the break itself. And um, we can do that. What do you think? Sounds good? Sounds good. Okay. Because we got a lot to talk about. We have some interesting things to talk about. And we have everybody here has an expertise and has dealt with the community. And this is going to be great. Sounds good, Edwin? Sounds good. Okay, so we'll come back from the break. We thank uh, everyone here on the panel, Ms. Cheryl uh, Reba, and she's running for the 21st Congressional District on Tuesday. And uh, we hope the all the best for her that she's able to come out successful. And then we'll come back from the break and we'll continue this great discussion. Sounds good? Thank you. All right.